All right, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So just doing a quick episode on how vehicle fuel efficiency improved once we started going down that direction. There's probably plenty of other longer, better videos about it out there, but this is the shorter budget version without any fancy expensive animation. Starting with the aerodynamics of vehicles, you'll probably notice if you've been around a while, Cars have kind of changed in their appearance from stuff like this you would see back in like the 80s and 70s where they were basically just flat faced bricks on wheels to stuff like this now where, you know, they're much more aerodynamic meant to cut through the air as opposed to basically pushing into the air and thus building up a bunch of air in front of them. Another visible from the outside feature is the changes in tires that we've made over time, particularly over the last couple decades. Now don't get me wrong, they always have had some kind of tread, but nowadays they have really specifically designed stuff, and also are actually more pressurized today than they were in previous times. That combined with really specified tread designs helps give them maximum traction and grip on the road. The particular way the fuel is ignited in the pistons has changed also, as back in the very old early days of vehicle, it was literally just the fuel sprayed into the piston chamber and then lit. That eventually gave way to fuel-air mixers, which spiraled the thin jet of fuel around with some air in a pre-chamber before going into the piston chamber, giving it a more even distribution before being lit, so that more of it would actually be lit and be lit more evenly. And then that, in modern times, has given way to the modern fuel injector, actually atomizes the fuel into tiny micro slash nano droplets, which obviously works much better for a even distribution. And the injectors and air intakes are positioned in such a way so that within the piston chamber itself, the two blend together nicely in a double swirl, since that arrangement allows for absolute maximized mixing of fuel and air, the car itself can actually tone back the amount of fuel that it injects. Also in modern cars, most of the side things within the engine, various pumps, the AC system and whatnot, those are powered electrically from the battery, as opposed to in a lot of older cars, a lot of stuff was directly powered by the shaft itself, thus weighing it down in a sense, eating off a bit of its kinetic energy, and something that's begun being adopted very recently is a dual clutch system. A stick shift or manual shift, a car where to change gears as you reach each speed, usually every 15 to 20 miles per hour or so, you have to move the gear shift yourself through 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. That's because in that setup, the shaft that the engine is turning is directly connected against the shaft that then turns the axles turning the wheels. There's only that single layer of separation. Whereas in an automatic shifting vehicle, which is what most modern vehicles are, to do that, up until modern times at least, that had to be done through something complex and kind of energy downgrading, that being a planetary gear system. So adding additional separation layers and thus having some energy loss through each. Whereas now with the dual clutch system, they're going back to the manual arrangement, which is more efficient, because it's much more direct, there's less loss through different layers. However, it is still automatically shifting because now we have computers that can do it. The equivalent manual effect of you physically shifting it is just done by a hydraulic pump instead, the action of which is controlled by the onboard computer. And also a lot of vehicles are now, again, at least those aimed at being more fuel efficient, taking up a additional gear system Additional number of gears, I mean. Whereas instead of the old traditional four or five, they are now adopting usually eight or nine. Because remember, as the pistons are firing in the car, they're turning the first shaft at a specific speed. And to convert that into different road speeds, the gears on that shaft have to match up to different sized gears on the other shaft. And up until present day, for the most part, everything was usually four or five different gears, one for every 15 to 20 miles per hour or so. But at the outer edges of each gear's range would still have efficiency losses. So now they're going into something more like one for every 10 to 12 miles per hour or so, so that the engine output can constantly be most directly, most efficiently converted into motion. 
And then the big one obviously has been car hybridization. Having a small EV-esque battery pack that is usually enough for 10 to 40 miles depending on the particular model that is charged by the engine while idling as opposed to in just a regular combustion engine that energy would just be lost because it's doing nothing. In a hybrid, all the turning in the engine while idle is used to charge those batteries, as well as some hybrids have regenerative braking as well. And the car will switch between the engine and the battery, running in essentially EV mode for whatever range the small battery gives, 10 to 40 miles, thus removing that much distance of fuel consumption. And also, of course, weight reduction, which again, specifically applies to vehicles aimed at having high fuel efficiency. Show-off cars, or in reality, cheap man's show-off cars, like Mustangs or Dodge Chargers, they weighed 4,000 pounds three decades ago, they still weigh 4,000 pounds, whereas vehicle models aimed at increasing fuel efficiency, like say the Toyota Prius, Honda Civic, Hyundai Ioniq, things of the sort, you'll find that they are decently lighter than the up until now historical average weight of cars. The usual average weight of cars used to be between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds. However, in the case of fuel efficiency aimed models, you'll find that their weight ranges are a class lower, down usually between 2,500 and 3,500 pounds. So those are the various different changes that we have made to vehicles. Vehicles with the most of these changes incorporated obviously will have the highest fuel efficiency vehicles like the latest models of the Toyota Prius, which will get you around 55 miles a gallon, and the most fuel-efficient vehicle, the Hyundai Ioniq hybrid version, which will give you almost 60 miles a gallon, right about the maximum threshold of what you can pull off for a vehicle the size of a average regular car. Right. Anyways, that's it for this, so thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. I have plenty of other episodes about all kinds of different stuff and topics you can listen to if you want. You can support me through PayPal, Patreon if you want, just only do so if you actually can. And go subscribe to my Catch channel, we'll try to help us get our 2,000 subs. But no matter what happens to me anyways, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.